Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and at today's top Reddit post, we're going to be taking a look on choosing baggers. And for our first post, ex-friend expected rent-free. This subreddit made me remember my ultimate story on this subject as far as a baffling behavior. My lifelong friend wanted to live in my condo that I wasn't actively using because I had relocated to another city apartment before I was going to then rent out the condo. I told him that he could use it for a small amount of time until he found his own place, maybe even six months, just not for too long. I paid 280 a month HOA dues, it had a pool, security, etc., and property taxes ran me about 200 a month. Plus, the electric bill was then assessed by each unit monthly. I told him he could stay at the condo for 550 a month, just my cost to keep it going, and this was in Southern California. He agreed to pay, didn't seem to grumble or anything, and I honestly thought I was doing something really nice for my longest time friend. As 820 square foot condo with a pool for 550 a month in California, you're just not going to find that. I wasn't making a dime of him. I just didn't want to lose money and subsidize his lifestyle out of my pocket. Fast forward a few months, my other friends all informed me that he's been texting them about what a bastard I am that I dare change him rent to stay there. Like, how could a friend charge money for that? My friends didn't know what it was the deal, so they asked me and I told them I'm not charging him any rent. I'm literally just asking that he pay the costs of the unit and nothing more. For reference, when he left eventually, I rented it for several years at $1,300 a month, so he was not even paying half the market's rent. I owned the condo, free and clear, so I had lower costs with no mortgage, thus allowing me to charge him less and break even. Finally, when we eventually went to move my stuff out of there, and yes, it was fully furnished too with a nice TV, kitchen items, everything you could need, he had broken about a quarter of my dishes, he had left a used condom hanging on a trash can, and while my 105-pound girlfriend and I packed my stuff, he sat on the couch not offering to help at all, even once in three days. He laughed about the condom, he took a giant dump in the bathroom and clogged the toilet, requiring a plumber to fix. And then when we went to dinner, he forgot his wallet and never paid me back. He even woke us up early after we were up late packing by talking on the phone with online friends he met on various chat forums. We didn't remain friends long after that, needless to say. I couldn't believe just how oblivious that is to get such a good deal then badmouth the person for doing you a favor, trash their place. I spent a bunch more on housekeeping and my real estate agent who was renting it out after he left said that the housekeeping service had never seen a place so filthy. There was dirt and just filth everywhere. We wiped it down. You know, guys, one thing I learned more and more is that it doesn't matter how much you help people. People don't want to help themselves. Uh, you, you can't take their burden because in the end, you're going to pay for that. It may be with money or it may be even with your sanity. Surreal experience at a condo meeting. Translated from r slash Italy. Original post by you slash Fontero. A few weeks ago, I joined a condo meeting in my mom's place as I desired to spare her soul from the grief that such an event inevitably causes. The meeting wasn't planned. It was a request from a tenant a guy in his 40s with a wife as charming as a bear with hemorrhoids, polite as a truck driver and with the same generous spirit as a financial consultant, plus two kids under nine that during their short lives had received more insults than love from their mom. The only point of order, proposition on the shared attic and subsequent discussions. A few months prior, the guy, who usually appears quite like a docile and polite victim to his wife, had asked the other tenants if he could rent the shared attic about 20 meters square in order to make a music studio out of it. He promised he would bring all the cables up from his apartment and take care of soundproofing the space himself. Since he had played music in his apartment for years, always using headphones and never bothering anyone, everyone said, sure, without any problem, 
The meeting was just to formalize everything. The assembly starts and he hands everyone some papers. It's a project made out of ruled paper and my first thought is, oh, this looks nicely done. Then I receive a preventive cost of 2,000 euros for the renovations and I think, what? I look around and I'm not the only baffled one. He opens with, thank you so very much for agreeing to pay for the renovation. At that, we all had on our face an expression similar to that of someone who just found a platypus in his bathtub. I say, so you want the renovation to be paid by the whole condo? Answer, well, yeah, you must. After all, I'm renovating it for the good of the whole condo. A tenant's trying to stifle a laugh for decency's sake. Everyone's staring at the bald propositioner. I'm the only one beside him under 70 years of age. No one else plays music. Someone asks the mastermind how much he was planning to pay for rent to the condo, and he goes, at most 40 euros, but 20 euros more reasonable. The guy who is trying not to laugh sees his attempt. In the meantime, we notice the project does not include all the soundproofing, but also the moving of a door. That includes making a new entrance in another side of the wall, the installation of a storage space with steel door for his equipment. He wants to leave the amplifiers, a 5,000 euro keyboard and more, and the removal of a sink. So all in all, the man came to tell us without a hint of shame that he want the whole condo to pay for his music studio and that they should rent to him basically for free. The discussion begins. We bring to his attention that we hadn't agreed to anything, not even to the expenses for the change of purpose to the local, let alone for the rest of the renovation. His answer? Well, I thought it was obvious you would pay. Everyone would have got that. I tell him it's ridiculous to pretend like everyone will get used out of the renovation. Even if everyone walks by the attic to use the roof, that doesn't make the work done any more useful to them. It may actually hurt them as some of them use the attic as storage space. His answer, what does that have to do with anything? If I do these renovations, the space will improve, so you have to pay. Many others try to explain to him that his request is ridiculous and that it's not an actual renovation for the good of the condo. But he says, out of everything, this is what I recall best. If one day I decide to sell the apartment, I'll leave the improved room to everyone else in the condo. It's not right that I should lose money on this and give it all for free. Some try to meet him halfway. If one day you decide to sell, we can repay you, at least partially. No one likes the idea, but there was no time to disapprove of it until he goes, Unacceptable. I can't see why I should pay a single penny for this. Someone else says, Maybe you could do the renovations, pay for them, and we give you a break on the rent until January. To that, he just says, not a chance. Why should I pay first when I'm doing you a favor? We make him aware that the rent that he wants to pay is laughable, and that he could just rent somewhere else, and that would be it. For his part, he blurts out, Do you have any idea how much that would cost me? I can't afford that. At this point, Everyone is openly laughing at him, so much that, all fussy, he blurts out something along the lines of, I can see that it's impossible to reason with you people here. He takes back all his papers and goes back home angrily. And he did look somewhat mentally stable. Translator's note, the story is amazingly hilarious in talent. Once again, thank you to you slash Fontero for letting me translate it. TLDR, a guy wants to renovate the attic in his condo to make it into a music studio. At first, the other tenants are okay with it. He seems like a nice guy. But then he asks to pay for the renovations for him and offers to pay a ridiculously low amount for the space's rent. 
It's the night amidst everyone's hilarity. Add it. Fix some grammar. You know, guys, one thing that really, really kills me is people that they, they really think they're entitled to everything. I mean, think that. So you're going to be using a music studio. You won't pay for anything. And you want like to pay pennies a day to actually have a whole room for yourself. That's that's just not how the world works. And the saddest thing is like this guy's generation next. I know even me, I have some issues at times with gener uh, millennials and generation Z. But honestly, this guy has no excuse. Okay, and I, I'm not putting down. Millennials or Generation Z, mostly because a lot of the new inventions, a lot of visionary things that are coming out are from those generations. Okay. Uh, the only problem is there is a percentage of people from those generations that are way too entitled, but that just proves that you have entitled people anywhere and everywhere. And doesn't matter the generation of the person. You paid a hundred dollars for my table and chairs. Now give it back for $30. I never thought I would have such a story to tell, but here we go. Sorry for mobile format, yada yada. This incident was just told to me, female 19, about an hour ago by my lovely father, who is too nice for her own good, about our supposed sweet old lady neighbor trying to sell her house, as follows. During the garage sale, choosing beggar was having to get rid of old junk, so she would be ready to move out. My lovely mother, of course, wants to help out and buys a few things here and there, but was really interested in a glass wicker table and chair set that was for sale at $80. So being the kind woman she is, she gave her $100 instead, mainly to help out as well as thinking it was worth a bit more. No worries. All was good until a few weeks ago when she inspected the table and chairs in our home for no reason at all and scolded my mother for not leaving them inside or doing certain things to them, none of her business anyway, and demanded my mother send it down and paint it with her own time and money, then decide she would then buy it back afterwards if her house doesn't sell, without even asking for a measly $30. My poor mother, who would have actually done this for this horrible lady, finally has me to stand up to her. For backstory, this woman would come over and my mother would give her whatever she wants because she has a kind heart, but when it comes to my mother, she would charge her and not even offer water in her house because of how stingy she was. Classic choosing beggar. Believe it or not, I've seen those things before. I've seen people selling something to someone else and then almost forcing the person to sell it back for an actual lower price. Didn't mow my lawn? Pay my $30 bill. Be lurking on this sub trying to think of any choosing beggar moments in my life. I thought I had none until sharing this story to some co-workers yesterday. TLDR below. Seven to eight years ago, I lived in a duplex. On the lease, the rental agency had specified grass height standard, no longer than six inches. When the law exceeded, they would send two notifications over three days before sending a law care service and charge $30. My neighbor, choosing bagger, would always wait until the last minute to mow her lawn. One weekend, as I was mowing my lawn, choosing bagger flagged me down. Choosing bagger told me, her mower was broken and asked me to mow her lawn. Being a kind neighbor, I said yes. I then offered my mower to her to use next time, which she was thankful. Fast forward, the lawns are getting long. During casual conversations with choosing bagger, she would make weirdly suggestive comments like, my lawn's getting really long, or I don't know if I can mow my lawn on my own. I brushed them off, not thinking too much about them. Over the weekend, I mow my lawn. Monday rolls around, and I saw the lawn care service mowing her lawn. Did not think anything of it until three days later, when Choosing Bagger got the bill. As the conversation occurred quite a while ago, I am paraphrasing. I just got charged $30 from rental agency. Why didn't you mow my lawn? I'm sorry. You knew my lawn mower was broken. I offer my mower for you to use. Well, you did it for me last time. 
I thought you would do it again. Why would I do that? Because I'm a single mom and I was very tired. You should have just helped me out. Sorry, but I don't feel it's my responsibility. If you had asked, I may have helped, but you didn't. Uh, I thought I did. Well, you should pay this bill. What? Well, you didn't mow my lawn because I thought you were going to do it. So you should pay the bill. Uh, sorry, but no. This is not fair. You know I can't afford this. Why can you not help me out? At this point, I was done. I end the conversation, moved on. For several weeks, choosing Bagger ignored me, never acknowledged my presence, and only talked to my wife. She did use my mower next time. TLDR, mowed my neighbor's yard. She expected me to keep mowing it for her, then demanded I cover loan care bill, as it was my fault. Well, yeah. Guys, look, uh, this, I, I think it's a uh, choose bagger slash entitled parents in a sense, since she used the whole, I'm a single mom. But you do have people like that. And, and it's like, honestly, if you ask people for help, most of them will help you. Uh, the only thing is, don't do as people on you anything, even if you feel uh, you helped them in the past. And probably they should help you as well. But if they don't know, they may not do it for you. And trying to get them to pay a bill for something that is your responsibility, also not right. So guys, if you got to the end of this video, thank you very much. Uh, please leave a comment, give me a thumbs up or down, subscribe to the channel if you can. I am still trying to run my 10,000 subscriber giveaway of uh, five $30 gift certificates for any store that you guys want. And hopefully, uh, PS4 or a, the next box one, depending on uh, how much I get from YouTube by that point. So thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry I've been a couple of weeks away making those videos. I've been dealing with a lot of stuff. Um, I may comment a little bit of that in future videos. But again, guys, thank you very much for keeping up with the channel, for, you know, having to deal with my accent and everything. And I'll be seeing you in a couple of days. Thank you.